Uh, now, uh, first of all, Ben, today uh, we're going to be going over to some hospitals uh, in a little while. Uh, it is uh, the synchronised strike of the consultants, hospital consultants and junior doctors. It's been described as the worst strike in NHS history. It is deliberately targeting patients, isn't it? I mean, why would you coordinate your strikes if not to compromise patient safety? Well, absolutely right, Kevin. I mean, 120,000 people, a record number of people died in the last year waiting <laughs> for treatment. And that has to be uh, exacerbated materially by these doctors going on strike. Of course, the NHS was in huge problems after lockdowns. You know, the, the waiting list doubled in the period of time for which people were waiting also doubled during lockdowns from, I think, about 4 million before lockdowns to now pushing 8 million people on that waiting list. But, of course, every strike, every walkout by nurses, junior doctors or consultants, um, and, of course, a, you know, coordinated strike makes it much worse, every walkout causes greater health complications for the country. And... Uh, the government has to get, get ahead of this problem. And it's just another sign of the United Kingdom not working. Rishi Sunak said that he was going to get waiting lists down. Well, waiting lists are getting worse. More and more people are dying on that waiting list. More and more people are failing to get diagnosed <laughs> with cardiovascular uh, cancer and so on in time in order to get treatment. We are creating a health crisis. And I must <laughs> just reiterate that the beginnings of this crisis, the roots of this crisis, was because the NHS became the COVID treatment centre during lockdowns. That's all it did. And in the pursuit of saving the NHS, which we kept told we were going to do by staying at home and uh, locking ourselves up, actually what we've done is condemn the NHS. And uh, the strikes are further evidence of it. Uh, and uh, in terms of patient safety, I mean, there won't be any. No doctors, no consultants. Uh, this no. means, you know, let, let's not beat about the bush, Ben. This means patients will die. This is their bargaining chip. Their bargaining chip is the safety of patients. We will compromise the safety of patients. If necessary, let them die so that you have to give us a pay rise. Uh, it's not a very nice equation, is it? It's not. As I mentioned, 120,000 record number of people died on the waiting list last year. That's nearly as many people who died from COVID or died with COVID, I should say, rather than from COVID. It's debatable whether the number of people who died, you know, ha having contracted COVID died from it or not. No, I think it's an utter disaster. The NHS is completely broken. And um, I don't know how Rishi Sunak is going to get ahead of this problem, because as we can all see, it's, you know, it's a self-reinforcing downward spiral. You know, somehow he's got to put the brakes on it and reverse it. I, I see no easy way out of this problem. Uh, just before we move on, I should point out that the 850,000 uh, operations have been cancelled uh, or postponed since uh, December because of these strikes. And uh, during a recent two-day strike by doctors, 30,000 cancer appointments, including surgeries, were cancelled. That's what's going on on a daily basis. That's what these strikes are doing. Uh, they are turning the NHS into an utter basket case. Something needs to be done. Uh, and it's not for want of money. Can I just say it's not for want of money? Last year, we spent much more than <laughs> what they call the Brexit dividend on the NHS, you know, that £350 million pounds a week that we yeah. that Boris Johnson controversially put on that bus? Well, yeah. we spent a lot more than that per week. In in addition, since we Brexited, it's got nothing to do with money. Record sums being sent on the NHS. It's just a broken formula. Yeah. 200 billion quid a year, uh, that is enough money Absolutely. for any organisation. It doesn't need any more money. It needs serious reorganisation. Uh, but the chances of any British politician being brave enough to confront that necessity are next to zero. This will stagger on in the mess that it always has been. It's a disgrace, it really is. Um, uh, talking of disgraces, uh, guess who uh, brokered Keir Starmer's embarrassing summit in Paris with Emmanuel Macron yesterday, uh, pulling his strings, of course, it is Sir, Sir Tony Blair. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, or believable, know, we more know, to the point. Oh, it's very believable. I and mean, we know that Starmer is an out and out Europhile. Uh, you know, in 2019, he was proposing that 
the Labour Party should negotiate a really good deal with the EU and then put it to the people of the United Kingdom, giving them a choice between the really good deal that they've negotiated and remaining in the EU. And then he would campaign to remain. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And, yes, uh, I do. And Starmer will not hesitate to take us back into the EU or get us as close as possible as he can to it. That is his aim. You know, when, when, when it comes to dealing with the uh, migration crisis, the illegal migration crisis we've got across the channel, the first thing he did was hop across the channel to see his mate uh, Macron, go to The Hague, see if he can sort out a deal with the European Union on it. Now he's talking to the European Union about, you know, an even closer relationship. We don't want a close relationship with the EU. Exactly. Down that path, down that path lies much more socialism, much more government spend, much more government intervention, an abrogation of responsibility from Westminster to Brussels, and a complete abuse of the Brexit vote in 2016. What we need is a government that takes back control, puts the British national interest first, and takes the steps that we can as an independent sovereign country to sort our own problems out without doing it on a bilateral or multilateral basis. We've had enough agreements with foreign countries and foreign institutions in order to try and solve our problems. We need a government that's going to do it unilaterally using the ample power that they have in government and through parliament. That's what we voted for in 2016. That's what they need to do. Starmer will not deliver it. And frankly, Tony Blair, as you said, Kevin, at the opening, you vote Starmer, you get Tony Blair. And Tony Blair had nothing Tony Blair did in office resulted in good for this country. Everything turned out bad I agree. under Tony Blair. Disastrous guy. And uh, don't forget that uh, Keir Starmer now is denying that uh, he's basically applied for Britain to become an associate member of the EU. He's denying that. Uh, my bet, he's lying.